Uh, you'll be right along. 632. Call back into order. Uh, regular session, open session. Uh, first item on our agenda, as usual, is public input. If it's, uh, you have something that you want to talk about that's not on the agenda, um, take it now. Any? Nope. Guess not. All right. Uh, next item is a student report. And we have Michael Tyrell, of class of 2019, uh, with us this evening. Michael. Hello. Michael. Michael. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Michael Tyrell. I'm a member of the class of 2019. I'm glad to be speaking uh, in my first announcement to the school committee as a newly elected uh, student representative. <coughs> Although fall sports are coming to an end, Football has a game against our rival, Linfield. This will take place at Linfield on Thanksgiving morning at 10.30. The cheer team is placed sixth in the state, less than a point away uh, from qualifying for nationals. Uh, both these teams had incredible seasons, and it's uh, set to come to an end. Uh, Powder Puff has a game tomorrow at 5.30, which pits the seniors uh, against the juniors. We have also already begun the transition into winter athletics, with tryouts for winter sports beginning on Monday the 28th. Uh, in this intermediate period between the two athletic seasons, many academic, theater, and other intramural events have occurred. Academic clubs have had success in the past few weeks. The academic decathlon team traveled to Franklin for a statewide competition, uh, and two students placed. Isabel Thorstead received a gold medal in art and a silver medal in music in her division. I placed fifth overall and received a gold medal in science and a bronze in economics. Our school is also pursuing education in technology. A group in the school, Change Team, which seeks to develop students' interests in technology, has launched an app development challenge, which seeks to enable students to channel their creativity and create an idea for an application. This challenge also enabled them to expand their knowledge in technology and gain an introduction to these skills that are needed in the 21st century. Here, students will submit an app ideas to Change Team for review, who will decide on the five most innovative and useful ideas. These will then be pitched by video for a school-wide vote. This challenge also acts as a precursor for the Hour of Code, which is a week from, de from December 5th to 11th, and it's a global initiative that seeks to introduce students to programming and computer science. Also, the North Reading Rotary Club hosted the Reality Fair, which invited local business people to speak about income and to help students understand finance management in real life. There are a few performing arts events that are occurring in the school currently. Tickets are being sold for Oliver, a theater production by Maskers. This show is based off the Charles Dickens novel, Oliver Twist. Shows will be had on, held on December 2nd, 3rd, 9th, and 10th. Another production has been successful recently. Dancing with the Hornets, a dancing competition run by the North Reading Dance Team, has been extremely successful. This group will be performing during Pep Rally, a day for the school to display our spirit. Pep Rally is a competition between the grades that encourages excitement and school spirit. The days leading up to this event are known, known as Spirit Week, in which students are encouraged to dress up and wear clothing that conforms with certain themes assigned to each day. Tomorrow is Class Color Day, where each grade is encouraged to wear their clothing that is the color of the class they were assigned. I'm presenting a piece of work for my Advanced Placement Environmental Science class. This project had us creating an, an informational poster that displayed information on an endangered species in a creative way. This was a group project, and I worked with the students Molly Pfeffer and Christina Lasden. We created a poster that looks like the head of an Asian elephant, our endangered uh, species assignment. I have a rubric here that I will hand around um, for okay. this project. It's easy. It looks like an Asian elephant. That's really good. Thank you for your time, and uh, have a happy holiday. Happy holidays and Thanksgiving. Thank you. Very, Very good. Nice Excellent job. job. <laughs> great job for your job, Mike. Debut. <laughs> Any uh, questions for Michael? I just want to add, it's great um, fall sports season. Also encourage uh, anybody who can to get your tickets to Oliver. My wife is making a large number of the costumes again, so I'm sure they'll be excellent. I just um, left the box office and there are tickets remaining. Are the tickets available? There are. Okay. The tickets available, yes. And uh, that's important. Not nothing sold out. That's impressive. Your performance on uh, at the decathlon. What, what, what? Without going into all the detail, like what? How does it? How does it work? <coughs> so we uh, travel to Franklin at the beginning of the day, and we take subject tests, which are tests of fifty multiple choice questions, uh, and we get thirty minutes times. So we take seven of these throughout the day, 
and the people who place best second and third in their divisions, which are divided by GPA, are awarded medals, and that's for the whole state. Wow. Very good. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Uh, you don't have to stay, you know, unless you're being can, punished for something. <laughs> punished and, but otherwise, uh, we're going to move on to uh, take our take out of uh, you know, order on our agenda and, and skip to uh, new business. We have a presentation uh, on SBIRT. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Is this good, this volume? Okay. Um, so I first just want to say thank you for giving me a few minutes on the agenda tonight to talk with you about the SBIRT initiative. What I'm hoping to do through my presentation is explain what SBIRT is, give you a sense of what it looks like in practice, and review with you some specific action steps we'd like to take this year to prepare ourselves for implementation moving forward. So with that in mind, I will go ahead and get started. So what is SBIRT? SBIRT is a structured evidence-based protocol that was developed by the Department of Public Health for use by school personnel. The goals of SBIRT include early identification and intervention for patterns of alcohol and or substance use that create a health risk. The SBIRT protocol promotes prevention and identifies early risk of substance use among adolescents. So SBIRT, the acronym, what does it stand for? So the S stands for screening, which is intended to be a universal screening. So we're not talking about just a select group of students, we're talking about all students. Um, it's meant to be annual, so in terms of the time frame, the screening would take place annually. The BI stands for Brief Intervention, which is focused on education and risks associated with unhealthy substance use. And the RT stands for Referral to Treatment. So where, where did SBIRT come from? So under the newly adopted House Bill number 4056, which is known as the Opioid Law, um, this law was signed into effect in March of 2016. So under this statute, school districts are required to engage in specific actions. So one of these actions is the implementation of a verbal screening to assess substance use at two grade levels annually. <coughs> so that's where SBIRT originates from. This screening requirement is mandatory for the 2017-18 school year. So as we're thinking about implementing this, um, as I mentioned earlier, the intention is to be two classes annually. So in order to prepare for this, what we'd like to do is conduct a trial screening on a random sample of grade nine students. Um, we're thinking two sections, approximately 50 students. So the purpose of the trial screening is to identify our needs to complete this initiative efficiently in the 2017, 2018 and beyond and to better allocate resources appropriately so we know what we need, how much, and what we need to do it. Participation is voluntary and students can opt out at any time and also parents have an option to opt their child out as well. So the way we would look to structure this trial imp implementation is we would have students engage in the SBIRT verbal screening in conjunction with the completion of postural screenings, um, our target date for this would be February of 2017. So this structure provides a natural opportunity for the SBIRT screening to occur and builds upon our existing infrastructure. So by that I just mean students and staff are already acclimated to coming down for postural screenings. They know they're dismissed from a certain class, they come down to the office. That is already in place and going smoothly. So looking at that as an opportunity to plug in the SBART screening as well. 
um, where that infrastructure already exists. Um, parents would receive a letter in advance providing an overview of SBIRT, explaining that students will be chosen completely at random and providing instructions on how to opt out. We would look to send this letter out to parents in December so that they would have notice of this. Um, additionally, we would send out another email <coughs> reminder which would give parents another opportunity to opt out of the screening. Um, and that would be just a couple of weeks prior to the scheduled screening. So what types of questions will be asked in the screening? Um, so the tool that is used to assess for substance use is a screening tool known as the CRAFT. The CRAFT is a behavioral health tool used for students under the age of 21. It takes approximately five minutes to administer and is conducted in a private area in a one-on-one -on -one setting. What trends do we expect? So generally speaking, the data suggests that 85% of students will screen negative and approximately 15% will screen positive and 5% of students will require referral to treatment. So if a student screens positive, he or she is referred for a brief intervention in which the student is provided education on the effects of unhealthy substance use. The brief intervention would occur immediately following the screening. The results are completely confidential and cannot be shared without explicit permission from the student. So our goal with this trial implementation is to identify any potential barriers to a successful implementation so we're better prepared for a larger scale implementation in the 2017-18 school year. A trial implementation will provide an opportunity for identified staff to acclimate to the assessment tool and to identify any sort of logistical concerns that might arise. And the data from the trial will help us to allocate resources appropriately for successful implementation, again, in the 2017-18 school year. So in your packet that I gave to the school committee members, you should have a copy of this presentation as well as a copy of the letter that I would send out to parents and also a frequently asked questions um, paperwork in there as well. Are there any questions or comments or concerns that I could answer? Yeah. Sure, yes. Uh, why did you pick the ninth grade as the I picked, sure, I picked the ninth grade because they were already planned to do the postural screening and that's the piece where I think it's important to build upon our existing infrastructure. So that was already happening, so that in my mind was the natural opportunity for this. I just have one other question. Sure. I know that you spoke about the confidentiality. Um, are the parents notified mm -hmm. if the uh, screening is positive? Only if the student gives us permission to do so. Regardless of how old the student is. Correct. Mm -hmm. Uh, you mentioned the opt-out aspect. When this yep. becomes mandatory from the state, can they still opt out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, they can. Kind of defeats the purpose. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I guess the other question, another question is, uh, how, who's going to choose the grade levels that we do the testing at every year? Sure. So it's, that's a local decision. So the state hasn't told us you have to do you know, grade X and grade Y. Um, so we, as a school district, can make that decision on our own. And uh, so I'm understanding it correctly. So it's mm -hmm. two grades, which means somewhere between 350 to 400 plus students yes. every year. Yep, correct. And so when we're doing this five-minute interview yep. questionnaire, what are the other students doing who are there? Right. So that's that's where doing a trial is going to help us sort of see what is going to what is the timing of this. How is it going to play out? So as the student comes down and they go for their postural screening. They finish and they go next door to the expert screening. We need that data to see, okay, how long is this time frame? Are we gonna have a backup of students? If we do, how are we managing that backup? Um, we have some ideas right now about what that might look like, but again, in my mind, a trial implementation is really gonna give us that data that we need to do this efficiently and effectively. I have two more quick questions. Sure. Is, so I'm assuming this mainly applies to middle school Yep. high school yep are all our guidance staff and nursing staff trained to administer this questionnaire at those two levels yes so right now for our trial we have trained staff to do a trial implementation for this and again part of this trial is to then make a better determination who who makes sense to be trained because 
districts have different personnel. Some districts are doing PE teachers, health teachers, um, nursing staff, guidance staff. But I think until we take our first step at sort of trying this implementation, we'll have a better sense of who else needs to be um, trained. Okay, and last question is what, what kind of reporting requirements do we have to the state? So the reporting is age, gender, and yes, no to some of the questions from the craft. There's no, no okay. um, identifying information. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Sure. Anybody else? Just a follow-up question sure. about the parent notification. If there is, you know, a referral for treatment, mm -hmm. would parents then be notified, I assume? Only with the student's explicit permission. So in the event that there is a concern with respect to safety, all of our regular legal guidelines that are in place would continue to be in place. So if there was an imminent risk of safety or anything like that, we would follow regularly established protocols for, with respect to safety. But they're very clear about this, that we need to have um, student permission to be able to share the results. Okay. Yes. So I think it, sure, it, it probably depends um, in theory. So the student screens positive for a brief intervention. So they're gonna meet with a guidance counselor who's gonna spend maybe, I would say about 10 to 15 minutes talking about these are the implications of this sort of substance use. But I think, again, that might be different student to student. You know, one student might ask more questions than another student. So another student might not have any questions and just sort of take more of a passive role. Um, so I think that's going to depend and vary student to student. Okay. And then um, you stated it's the ninth grade due to the postural screening. Um, so in the future, will it always be nine and ten, or will it vary so that you get all four classes at least twice a year? So. I think you know we'll collaborate on this decision and we'll be looking at you know what screenings are happening we'll also look at data and research um, behind you know I, there's something to be said about intervening with a screening like this that's universal on the earlier side eighth grade you know thinking about those grades too and then you know grade 10 is another grade that comes up in the research in terms of substance use and what's happening around that age so I would say we would be looking at what is happening in terms of the infrastructure with the screenings and then taking a look at the data and collaborating as a leadership team to make those decisions anybody else I just want to say I think this is a great program but I think it's a, another indication of um, the state and federal government continuing to put more responsibilities on the school department and school systems that shouldn't be on the school department and school systems this is obviously not going to take any any of your time or right. anybody else's yeah. time. Two thousand minutes. It's probably uh, a, a very useful program, but uh, unfortunately, every one of these is another unfunded mandate. Yes. Maybe. Yep. This is correct. Takes away from something else that mm -hmm. we were yeah. trying to do, uh, right. which was probably also an unfunded mandate. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we need to uh, to vote on this. Uh, is there a motion? We don't have a motion. Somebody We're looking for a motion to approve. Yes. Yeah. Is this going to make the reading of it? Just a trial. 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 The Espert trial. Uh, move to approve the Espert trial as explained by the Director of Pupil Personnel Services. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Aye. 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 Motion passed unanimously. Uh, and uh, the next thing we'll take on our agenda, we'll jump to uh, the elementary school recess item. Um, we had we received a letter from Trace, uh, Mrs. Uh, Tracy Conlon, uh, batch school parent, regarding elementary school recess, and uh, asked for 
an opportunity to share her thoughts on the matter with the school committee and Hi. she needs gonna need a microphone you need a microphone for that yeah, yeah. yeah. Mrs. Connor, we're give it, that's for the TV this one here that that one is for the room you can use both if you like you can use both thank you you can just press that Uh, yep, my name is Tracy Conlin. I have two boys, um, second grade and fifth grade at the batch. And I did write a letter to um, the school committee. I just have two issues I was hoping we could talk about. Um, the first one is the kids at the elementary at the batch get 15 minutes of recess. Um, <clears throat> to, and all of my knowledge comes from my two children, and we know they're not the best historians. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I was hoping that um, we could discuss um, lengthening the recess. I think it's incredibly important. I don't want to spend a lot of time um, pushing the matter with you folks because I think it's, you know, if you do a 10 minute Google search, every indication shows that it's not only beneficial to children's um, social and emotional um, development, but also their academic. Um, so I don't, you know, honestly, there's so many authoritative articles on the web. It, it's kind of a no-brainer. I don't, I don't feel like that's how um, I should use this time speaking with you. So I thought, and I didn't want to come up and just complain about the length of recess. So I wanted to come up and just give some, hopefully some solutions or ideas or ways that we could make it happen. Um, so <clears throat> I think... In my letter to you, I kind of outlined the day, and I'm not positive if that's how the day goes, but I broke it up um, in a six-hour, a six 15-minute day. Um, it looks to me like we have 15 extra minutes that we could devote uh, to recess already in the current day without having to change anything, um, with the exception of if we have to do 900 hours of structured learning time, it breaks down to five hours a day needs to be devoted to the structured learning time. And the only days that we can't get those five hours in are the half days. So that might be one stumbling block to a longer recess if we looked at the current day. Um, but I was hoping that there's flexibility in the district schedule, um, especially where in my letter I, I just did a very um, casual survey, monkey sur survey, and 166 parents responded. And um, I can get you the number, but a, a strong 82% uh, of parents were willing to go to school for a full day on Good Friday. And like, I don't, I'm not a statistician, so I don't want to use the numbers, but there was a lot of people who were willing to sort of do some give and take in order to get a longer recess. Um, and so there's, there's those two thoughts where we can already do it. There's also this kind of, um, it might be a little out there, but PE is um, considered a core subject, so those, the <coughs> PE hours, um, count towards the 900 hours of the structured day. So where our kids only get two 30-minute sections of PE a week, perhaps there is a way that we could um, have five days a week of PE, and that sort of alleviates the problem of the structured learning time hours. And on the DESE website, it says that um, the teacher does not need to physically be with the student um, as long as the students are participating in the same PE activities currently part of the school PE program. So the way I look at that is I interpret it that a para or even a parent volunteer could be overseeing the kids having the extra PE as long as those kids are doing the same stuff that their PE teacher has already outlined as part of the curriculum for PE. So I know it's a little out there, but I'm just trying to be creative. I'm just trying to come up with solutions. I didn't want to just come up and complain. but I think you folks know better how this might be accomplished. And I really do feel like if there's a will on, on the part of the school committee, then there's a way to make it happen. And there's a lot of parents who are for it. There's, you know, 
parents can't get to meetings, I know, but um, there was a lot of people who were very much in favor of this. And the second issue is um, at the batch, and I'm only speaking for the batch, a lot of times, frequently, the teachers um, have students, and as young as second grade, I know from my kids, go back up to their classrooms after lunch and fill out a slip that comes home to the parents saying, I missed homework or I didn't get this accomplished or it's some sort of sentence that they're told to write that comes home to the parents. And they do this during recess. Um, and they do it for academic reasons, not because they're being punished, they're doing it because they missed something or something was incorrect and it happens frequently. And I would like some, I, I don't, I hate to use the word ban, but I would love some strong guidance if you folks are on board with it to the teachers to say that, like the Academy of Pediatrics, we believe that re recess is crucial and it should not be taken away, particularly for academic reasons, especially to go back up to the classroom and spend five minutes of a 15 minute recess writing a slip that, that I have to go then sign. Um, so those are the two, those are the two issues that um, I wanted to address. And I know there's other folks here. I don't know if you want them to speak now too, or. <laughs> Do they have anything new to add? Anybody else? Yes, sir. Good evening. Um, I just have a comment on the second point. No, Scott, you should have a microphone. Here, you <laughs> can they, use mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Not oh, sorry. Uh, Scott Buckley, 5 Alden Street. Um, I just have a comment on the second point, not on the first one. I really don't have a position on the first one. But on the second point about any sort of guidance to teachers on what they should or should not be able to do, to do as a parent, I mean, I, I, I understand the concept of in loco parentis where if we send our kids to school, we <clears throat> are, are entrusting them to the teachers and the administrators. And so I would be a little bit concerned if the school committee were to be limiting what the teachers or what the principals um, can or can't do. And again, I, I, I'm not a teacher and I don't know, you know what, what the challenges are that they face, but I imagine there's limited ways in which they can you know, punish either for academics or for you know, something that is done in the school. And I would be a little bit concerned and, and I think that teachers have a hard job and I think that teachers need to have a little bit of a little bit of discretion given to them when they are overseeing our children and I think by all means if there's a concern that it should be raised to the teacher and to the principal and then eventually possibly to the superintendent but I really think that uh, I'm all for checks and balances and, and systems and I think that I'd be a little bit concerned if the school committee were to in any way say what the teachers or the principals were able to do if they felt that it was necessary and, and again I don't really have I haven't looked at the research. I really don't have a, a big opinion on, or any sort of opinion on the, uh, on how the time is set up. I don't really know what the uh, requirements are, but that was my only comment. We, we can't, we can't, we have no, it, it's not under our purview to tell uh, teachers what they do or principals what they do. That strictly uh, lies with the administration. So we have no say in this matter anyway. Right. Okay, so I, I, would, I, haven't, um, I haven't had an opportunity to speak with Mrs. Conlon or anybody for that matter um, representing parents in, in, in this is issue, but I would be um, happy to do that, you know, if there was a representative group that wanted to meet with me and we could talk about uh, some of what's in your letter. I think there were some, some, some things that I can share with you um, that, that are concerning to me about our ability to honor completely what it is you request in your letter, Mrs. Carlin, but I, I, I'd like an opportunity to be able to do that with you, you know, maybe with um, 
an elementary principal representative or two, and, and I think there's some information I can share with you that um, you know, we might be able to you know, kind of both address your concerns and the concerns of others that there might be, but also balance it with um, you know, kind of the restrictions that I think are in place for the, for the district to be able to honor everything. For example, the finances of just ex extending the school day or, or adding a day into the calendar or taking away from professional development, those kinds of things. I'd like to have a conversation with you and anybody that you want to invite. I mean, we had a conversation a couple of years ago around the matter of kindergarten, and I think that the, the conversations at that time, Mr. Connolly joined me um, with a, a representative group of parents, and I'd like to think that those conversations were productive and we were able, able to make some improvements, I think, that, that, that people really valued. So I'd be willing to do that if the committee would like to send it back to me and I can like exchange an email with you and we can maybe get something going next month. I, I, I disagree with you. I don't think, I'm not sure time is of the essence here. Um, but just again, being devil's advocate, I, you know, I looked at it and I did some math and that 15% of the school week in the elementary schools is dedicated to lunch, recess, and phys ed. 15% of the time. So you're asking us now to go to at least, I, I'm assuming you're looking for an additional 15 minutes. Is that what you're asking for? That would be optimal. Yeah. So that goes to 19% of the time spent during the week would be dedicated to lunch, recess, and um, physical education. I, I'm, when you say time is of the essence, I, I'm just not convinced that finding a solution is where we should be. We have to find whether or not this is something that's worthwhile to do. Now, I know you say you've read a lot of studies and you've looked at a lot of papers. We haven't had the opportunity to do that. I'm not sure that the administration has. But before we find a solution, we need to find that there's a problem. And I think that's where we have to start. So um, my understanding is you want to do this for September of next year. I mean, I'm sure that there's enough time left between now and then for us to look at it and to come back with a response to, to your request. But there's a lot of complications here that the Academy of Pediatrics may not be looking at when it comes into a school setting. And that's dealing with time of day, learning hours, teacher contracts. Um, you know, you have 166 people that you say you polled. Out of those 156 people said they were interested in doing this. There are a lot more parents out there that we haven't heard from well beyond the 156 that you've heard from. So um, I think it's a good idea or a good suggestion that the superintendent take a look at this with the, probably the school principals. Um, but at this point, you know, I don't think we're willing to make it. I'm speaking for myself. I'm not willing to make any kind of a commitment towards pursuing this unless there's a reason to do it. Well, I guess my question would be then, what's the defining factor for you that... For me? I mean, I'm looking for sort of a definitive yay or nay, we're going to sort of look into it, or we're, or we're really not. I, I don't want it to go to subcommittee to die. That's what I'm saying. I think the first step is just what the superintendent said. Why don't you guys meet with him? And then I think they're probably going to take a look at it administratively to see whether or not there's any compelling reason to go to the next step and even, even look at this. Julie? Um, I think it's definitely worth a further discussion with administrators, I would hope, even maybe some teachers and parents. I'd be willing to sit with that group because I'm a parent, but I'm also a teacher. Um, I value recess, unstructured time. I think we require our kids at such young ages to sit for extended periods of time. I see it every day. Um, I think they need that opportunity to stretch out, laugh with a friend and run around. I don't know logistically how we can do that. So I think that is something that we could look into. But I think it's definitely something that I would be in favor of.
high school I'll days. Them. I'll meet with them. It was very difficult to find out the school day of other towns. For some reason, it's just not an easy thing to put to, to find. Our calendar does it, and I thank you for that. But so many others don't. So I don't. There's a ton of other towns that have a longer recess than 15 minutes. I don't know the length of their school day. I venture to say there's a bunch that are at 16, six hours, 15 minutes. That might be data that you want to provide the superintendent when you meet with them too. I think the superintendent yeah. probably has access to that data better than I did. I did a bunch of Maybe. research and I couldn't find it. So, Webster. So, Jerry, Jerry's going to like love this one. Um, one of the things that I've been um, looking at a lot lately, and I know that actually the assistant superintendent has also been looking at it, and it's not extending a recess, but it's something called mindfulness, which is, um, you know, call it um, meditation, call it yoga, and, and many school districts are starting to implement this at early grades, preschool, kindergarten. And it's not playtime, it's not recess, but from everything I've read, it's highly effective. And I actually, um, friended online socially a guy down in Austin who started a program at this Austin Elementary School and now he's been named like he's got a pretty high level position in the state now working on this and I've actually passed the information on to Patrick and I know Patrick um, Daly has been looking at some of this stuff um, we're also doing some of it at the high school um, with um, some health of the and wellness class health and wellness but also some of the guidance counselors in we terms are, of uh, school adjustment counselors working with stress etc um, it's not something that we're gonna implement overnight and again it's not much of this stuff is isn't thing something that the school committee can say oh we have we're, we're gonna implement <laughs> this like if, if, it, if it came down to uh, increasing the school day or changing school vacation that we would come in on because that involves contract and it's highly unlikely, even going to school a full day on um, Good Friday, that involves the contract. So, so it's just like, and, and if you haven't negotiated a contract before, I'm, I'm not gonna get into what that's like because I've negotiated the last three and Mr. Vinetti has negotiated the last four. And to even add something like um, full day on Good Friday is not something that I even wanna think about. But um, so, so there are other things to look at besides recess. I, I think meditation, mindfulness, Quiet time. PE option. Don't forget the PE option. That counts towards. Yeah, the but I don't. I don't know if we could add 30 minutes of PE a day and not not extend the school day. You just take it away from the academics. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think again. Take I think away from that's me. not going to happen. I think the best thing is to to meet with the superintendent and then see if we can get enough information that might convince some of us that it's worth looking into. Physical movement. Physical movement. I just want to be real careful. It's, it's not simple. It's it's anything but simple. Trust me. Okay, but I, I heard it's simple. It's not simple. That's why. It, conceptually, it may be simple, but to to implement it, and I just feel in the spirit of being, you know, I don't want to be disingenuous. To have something in place for Dece uh, September 2017 is it's unrealistic. I mean, well, then we're going to talk about that. I'll reach out to you. But there's to, to, to make that kind of an adjustment for, for September is, I think, you know, I just I don't want to mislead people. But I'm happy to sit down and we'll talk and we, we can you know, share data and such. But and, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to you probably tomorrow, Mrs. Conlon. You that can gather up a, a representative group of a few folks that we can meet in my office. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Uh, how many hours beyond the 900 are we at at the elementary? Do you, do you know? I'd have to calculate it. I'm sorry, I'm talking to this like you can hear me. <laughs> it's for the TV. I'd, ha I'd have to calculate it. I, what I can tell you right now, because I had conversations with the three elementary principals, is there's, not, there's no wiggle room in the, in the current schedule of the day that affords five minutes, 10 minutes, or 15, any min minutes to be attributed to, to recess. But I'll talk with you more about the responses that they shared with me and, and what some of the implications are of some of what you've talked about. Okay. All right, so we'll leave that with uh, your. Yes. You're going to. I'll reach out to you tomorrow. Talk and uh, set and up I'll a put meeting. Out whatever and get a group together. Superintendent Bernard. And discuss if, it. If you're, it's going to be an open meeting, like other. What I would ask you to do, just because you know, for a space accommodation, if you want to select, you know, maybe get three or four other parents. I'll have three or four people with me, and we'll at least have an initial conversation in my conference room. Okay. So you know, that can accommodate ten or so people. Okay, and okay. then I can discuss. We can discuss at the meeting whether you're okay with me putting out on the parent board the discussions, just so the all the other people who are interested or the other parents who are interested can. However, be. you want to select three or four people to, to join you to meet with me is up, you, you know how, however you want to do that. Mr. Okay. Bernard, do you want me to sit in on that with you? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, I'll reach out to you tomorrow. Okay. Thank okay. You. Uh, so let's see. Now we go back to uh, uh, we have a school trip. Is there somebody from? There is. Um, there is. There is no one here, Mr. Chairman. I, uh, I'll. I'll, so I'll we take that if you like. Up in order, okay. regular order. That sure. Time. Sure. Right. Um, so we will go back to uh, continued business. Uh, MSBA SSBC update. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A few things to report to you. Um, so the landscaper um, was on site um, last Monday um, to begin um, the process of replacing shrubs um, and pl other plantings that um, that had had died from the original plantings here at the middle high school. And um, its, its estimation is approximately 70% of what needs to be replaced uh, was done. But there is a remaining 30 plant, uh, percent of, of those um, plants that have died that will need to be replaced in the spring. The reason they were not done now is either there's a um, an issue around um, the availability of those plantings um, to replace them with what was the original planting, or that the season is not an op optimum season to be planting them. But um, that's the latest with um, kind of the landscaping update, which is you know quite quite overdue. Um, the drainage repairs, um, that began also last Monday um, and has continued. Um, actually, we, some of you might recall that um, November 17th was not going to be a day when some work was going to be done because of the, the early dismissal for the middle school. But um, working with Manafort, we did, we did afford them an opportunity to do some, um, some work down at kind of the, the lower parking lot area at the site of the former high school to, um, to accommodate one repair that needed to be made there, and that seemed to have gone uh, pretty well. Um, the, there were three crews on site here on Saturday, um, and, and an extensive amount of work was done. There was work to be done uh, today. Um, as of this afternoon, last report um, in my meeting with PMA and Manafort was that um, some paving of what was opened up over the weekend will be done uh, tomorrow. There was a, uh, a meeting held this morning. I'm sorry I don't have a further update on it, but um, I think, again, the SSBC um, is, is aware that the punch list was being reviewed today at the offices of Durham Whittier. There is a, there is a meeting scheduled for, uh, for 8 a.m. on this coming Wednesday um, at my office to review the reconciliation of the punch list. Um, again, that was all done today, so I have no update for you, but the purpose of Wednesday's meeting is to, is to um, review the status um, of the punch list items for the middle high school. And I think that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next item on our agenda is naming of a school faci school facility, um, and uh, we uh, had set a uh, deadline for expressing interest on being on a school uh, screening committee for naming uh, of the distance learning lab at high school, and uh, Mr. Uh, Jeffrey S Simons. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Catherine O'Connell, middle school principal, uh, A.J. LaPreet, high school principal, and Mr. Bernard uh, uh, have uh, expressed an interest in doing that, recommend that they, 
school committee establish a subcommittee to include these individuals. Um, is there a motion to that? Um, yeah, I was just going to suggest, uh, should we have a member of the school committee on this? or is if, someone, this? if someone would like to be, I think ready. Well, we have, uh, that would be a good the, idea. There's also, you know, uh, uh, going to be a, a, a different committee um, established for, um, no, it's, uh, we, we could have a, a member on that. I think there's a screening committee. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, Correct. Yeah. But there should probably be, a, I would think, at least one member of the school committee on right. there. Is there somebody that wants to volunteer for that? Um, I, I would do it. Right. <laughs> well, I don't think it's a lot of help. I'd Mr. Venezia to it. Mm -hmm. I would do it. Yes, Cindy, you got that? Okay. All right. Uh, I would have said that if you did. So we'll establish a, um, a date for uh, uh, accepting nominations um, on that committee of December 5th and open for two weeks. And nominations for names should be submitted in writing to the attention of superintendent of schools. Um, on, the, on the screening committee, do we have a uh, motion? Oh, before we do that, have we made it clear the reason why we're doing this? It, there's Doesn't been a, have a policy. No, but there's been a recommendation from a member of the school secondary school building committee to name this space after um, Dr. Right. Dr. David Troughton, former superintendent of North Reading Schools for 15 or 16 years, somewhere in that area. So that's why this committee is being formed. And if, Mr. Chairman, if I could just add. Yeah. So I think the purpose of the committee now, and Dan, I'm going to ask you if you could help us with this, is um, to solicit any additional nominations for the naming of the space by December 5th. I think that's in line with the spirit of the, of the policy. I think this is, again, I think this is all our first time working through that policy. But if we could just get that notice out to the community, and then following that, the screening committee <coughs> will entertain that on the agenda for the January 9th public hearing. So if somebody wants to. Uh, uh, name it something else, then they should uh, submit. Correct. And just for the record, yes. not only does the school committee yet have to approve the naming of any school facility, but then it has to go to town meeting for approval as well. Do we need a motion to, to appoint me to the committee? Or? Well, I think well, we need to, to, with the to make the whole committee. To make the whole committee and, and those names. Is there a limit of how many people nine. you want on it? There's if I remember correctly. That's right. There's a limit nine. of nine. That's correct. So we're at what currently? We're fine. We'd be at five. Okay. And that's including you, Jerry? Yes. It'll be Jeff Simons, myself, Mr. LaPrette, Ms. O'Connell, and Mr. Venezia. Can I make a motion to approve a subcommittee? including one of ours, Mr. Jerry Venezia, to be a screening committee to accept nominations for the naming of distance learning lab. Distance learning lab, because it's just this space. Right. 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 OK. Second. All right, made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, do you mind just a comment on a similar no. item? Yeah, go ahead. I just, I did, I, because I know this is something that there's been interest in, and I, and I think out of respect for the sizable donation that was made, I think it's nice for the community to know, too, that um, I have been in touch with the uh, nephew of Eleanor Dell, who left a sizable endowment to the school district um, as recent as this weekend, about the language to be included on a plaque to commemorate um, the donation that she made and so um, I anticipate that probably early next week the template for the language for the plaque to be installed down near the art wing um, will be in the works so I mean it, it may take some time because we're, we're getting it's a nice plaque we're getting the black brass plaque it mirrors the style of the Barry Kipnis plaque and I think it'll be a nice way to um, to identify and acknowledge you know what was about a six hundred and seventy five thousand dollar um, endowment from from Ellie Dell so that it's taken a little bit of time the communication has sometimes been slow with um, 
with the trustee that's representing her estate, but um, some progress was made just this weekend. So anything further on the Charlie Jones plaque? No, no. nothing further on that one. Okay. No. Okay, anything, nothing else on that. Uh, next item on our agenda is appointments to the uh, school committee's representatives to collective bargaining teams. And we need uh, uh, to have some uh, representatives to paraprofessionals collective bargaining, the custodians collective bargaining, and secretaries collective bargaining. Chairman, I'd move to appoint Mr. Webster as the school committee representative, collective bargaining unit with the paraprofessionals. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, Chairman, I'd approve. I mean, I'd move to approve uh, Ms. Imbriano as our school committee representative for the collective bargaining unit uh, with the custodians. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve Ms. Kopke as our rep school committee representative um, on the bargaining unit uh, with the secretaries. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. All right, let's see. And, and we have a, an appointment to the Athletic Facilities Committee. Mr. Webster, do you want it? Do you want me to do this? You can do it. Do you want it? Okay. I can speak on this, Mr. Chairman, if you Okay, like. would you do that? I would. So I think. Um, as the, as the um, initiative to comply with the requirements of having a, a lavatory facility at the Arthur um, J. Kenny Field, um, the town administrator has suggested that um, the Athletic Facilities Committee, which had been originally established to look, I think, primarily at um, the, the work to have the sod and irrigation installed at the all-purpose field and the softball diamond, although the scope of that committee did clearly include um, considering the, the, um, the lavatory facilities and the possibility of a concession stand. So it made sense, I was in communication with Mr. Webster as the chairman of this committee that, um, that this seemed to be the appropriate vehicle to kind of pursue that now as we look toward town meeting and the possibility of community funding. So um, in that same conversation, and then also brought up at a recent athletic, excuse me, at a recent finance planning team meeting, it was asked if, um, if, that, if the school committee would consider um, expanding the membership of the Athletic Facilities Committee to add a, um, a representative of the Finance Committee. So, um, I, again, I did communicate with Mr. Webster, and I think, um, although I did not speak to him about the length of the term of, of, um, of that member, but it seemed to me a year appointment might be a good place to start. So I think it's essentially the, the school committee is being looked to um, to expand the membership of the Athletic Facilities Committee to include a representative of the Finance Committee and then I think just to kind of continue now its efforts as an, a standing committee to explore the bathroom facility requirement and also um, entertain the possibility of a concession stand for, um, for that site. Can we exchange this for equal representation on the uh, Capital Projects Improvement Committee? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Can we also find out who from the Finance Committee is going to be like appointed? <laughs> the motion could specify. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, do we have a motion? Would you say one year? One year. I suggested a year, but it's, I just suggested that. I, I was hoping the work would be done in a year. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Webster, how do you feel about this? I, I don't see the need for it, but if they want it, they can. I don't, I'm not going to vote against it. Is there a motion? I moved one to of the two that was um, in favor of the <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but I couldn't. I don't know who they are. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman, I'd move to appoint a representative of the Finance Committee to serve in the Athletic Facilities Committee for a one-year term commencing November 1st, 21st, 2016. Second. Uh, be, okay. for, for discussion, uh, okay. shouldn't we have their okay. terms run concurrent with the current terms, which I'll end? The term is, it's, ran, you know, January it's really, 31st. You can, I think you can make it however you'd like. Whatever. I'd mend the motion that when is it, Mel? So if we appointed them now and their term ends January 31st, 2017. Is that when we're all appointed to? That'd be two months. Yeah. <laughs> no. We, it should go to January 31st, 2018. Okay. I'll mend the motion to uh, 
have that term go from November 21st, 2016. Yeah, I think to that makes sense. January 31st, 2000, and would you say 18? 18. Yeah. 18. And that the member of the Finance Committee be appointed by the Finance Committee, as long as it's somebody we like. Good. Does, does the second uh, second yeah. withstand that change? Yes. Um, I, I made and seconded. Is further discussion? I think uh, I'll add a little bit uh, to that. I think you you may have some trepidation about that, but that you know, individual is going to play a part in the process, no matter whether it's on the committee. Better to have them informed and invested. And invested. Right. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Uh, next item on our agenda is a school trip. Um, North Reading Middle School Robotics Club uh, have an opportunity to, uh, to take part in the Krista McAuliffe Technology Conference to be held. Uh, Thursday, December 1st at the Radisson Hotel in Manchester, New Hampshire. Uh, five North Reading students transported to the conference by a school department van with two North Reading teachers. Uh, Kathleen Dasho and Christine Lindsay will also be active participants and presenters at the conference. Is there a motion to approve that I think it's a great opportunity for the students I think just in the past couple of years of opening our new building I think we need a motion. you know right but um should I not even discuss this no of course you can <laughs> no 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 you can't no, I'm just yeah. expressing my yeah. support I think yeah. it's yeah. a great opportunity yeah. it is and I'll give you a motion <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she's she's kind of com combative. To, <laughs> the to the Radisson Hotel in Manchester, New Hampshire, for five students, December 1st, with the teachers of Ms. Dasho and Ms. Lindsay. So I was second. seconding the motion. Uh -oh. okay. I just stated the motion. All right. Motion now made and seconded. Is there discussion on the motion? I have nothing further to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is uh, is great. Where uh, our robotics program is uh, is beginning to take off, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, and, and to extend uh, Mrs. Kofke's uh, comments, that you know, this is just I think another example of of some of the really good work that we're seeing um, with students out of our digital learning model. I mean, I I have the good fortune of seeing um, some of this work go on in the school during the school day, and these students are. Um, they're just terrific. I mean, I, I, to think that they're middle school students and the work that they're doing with robotics is really astounding. And I just think that, um, I just think that this is just, you know, they're, they're, their talents are being recognized. They've been invited along with their teachers who will also be presenting at the conference to something that's really, this is a big deal, the Krista McCall of Technology Center. This is, this is good. So um, because it's an out of state trip, um, was the need to bring it to the committee for, for approval. Is New Hampshire still out of state? It is. It is. Uh, at least it, it was. <laughs> All right. Made seconded. Discussion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, minutes, none at this time. Budget, none at this time. Staffing, none at this time. And we have bids and donations. Um, we have several, as seems to be yeah. a ritual. Um, the first uh, is uh, Ms. Kathleen Pigian for $50 to purchase supplies for Thanksgiving baskets for local families in need. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to accept with gratitude a donation of $50 from Kathleen Abigan, um for Thanksgiving basket supplies for North Reading families. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, thank you very much. The next is Middle School Parents Association, Association in kind contributions totaling $150 to support a teacher appreciation lunch. Chair, I'd like to not, uh, recommend, make a motion to recommend with um, gratitude and in kind donation from the Middle School Parents Association of $150 for um, 
to have gone towards the teacher appreciation lunch. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. The uh, next uh, item is uh, J.T. Hood Parents Association uh, in-kind contributions totaling 25 39 and 87 cents for various enrichment activities and other expenses. I'd like to make a motion to accept with gratitude the in-kind donations from the Hood School Parents Association totaling $2,539.87 for enrichment and other expenses. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Thank you. Um, and uh, LD Bachelor School Parents, uh, Parents Organization in kind contributions totaling $4,797.87. For various school in Richmond activities, teacher supply reimbursements, field trip expenses, and other expenses. I'd like to make a motion to accept with gratitude the in kind donations from the Batch Elder School Parent Organization, totaling $4,797 for teacher supplies, enrichment, field trips, and other activities. Second. Second. I think Julie seconded. Second. Second. Uh, made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And E. Ethel Little School Parents Association in kind contributions totaling $6,635.12 for various enrichment activities, teacher supply reimbursement, school supplies, and other activities. I'd like to make a motion to accept with gratitude the in-kind donations from the Little School Parents um, Association totaling $6,635.12 for teacher supply reimbursement, enrichment activities, general school supplies, and other school activities. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. And LJT Hood elementary school parents association ten thousand dollars to support the startup of and supplies for the maker space units at the hood elementary school i'd like to make a motion to accept with gratitude the donation in the amount of ten thousand dollars from the jt hood elementary school um Yay. for i thought i thought it was a pa too yes yeah, sorry thank you um for the startup and the supply of the maker space which was nicely uh, mentioned in the transcript. Mm. Second. Made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Obviously the parent organizations are doing a lot of fundraising work. <laughs> I believe yes, a they lot. Do. It's unbelievable. They do. It's amazing what they can get done. I think, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I think when, when we, when you visit the Hood School for your um, uh, meeting this year, I think Mr. McKay is planning on being able to show you a little bit about what the makerspaces are doing and such. So, yeah. We had an introduction to that yeah, last, last year. year. Yes, and, uh, it, uh, it's pretty cool. It gets very close to my heart. Good, good. Getting some first-hand information from a seven-year-old too are you? of some nice. of the cool things that she's done in there. Nice. So. This uh, from a seven-year-old. My daughter. Yeah. Is she recommending any changes in the curriculum or anything? Or? No? All right. She'd love more recess. I was just wondering. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, next item on our agenda is subcommittee updates. Finance planning team met on November 15th. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, we talked about the revenues, and it seems like the, the town administrator and the uh, chairman of the board of selectmen are pretty much locked into the revenue numbers that we have now as being correct me if I'm wrong Michael but accurate numbers are pretty accurate numbers as to where they expect us to be correct yeah I think they're so they're trying to they were compelling in that this number isn't going to change much this is what we have right. and that and again correct me if I'm wrong but I think that they said right now that for a school committee level services budget uh, that we're six hundred and sixteen thousand dollars short of having sufficient funds for a level services budget I'm not sure how they're defining level services mm. um, yeah, that was, that Different, was differently than we had. We had provided service, a three-year yeah. pro forma budget um, about a year ago. We that those numbers were updated over the summer, so they're using that projection 
which was very early on. Things, things right. will change, obviously, right. using that projection. And did that include NRPS 2021? It did not. It did not. Did so not. that does not include that. No, they made either. that that clear. Yeah. Uh, they talked about, we talked about the Kenny Field uh, aquatic <coughs> facilities, uh, the bathroom facilities, I'm sorry, and they did make that recommendation that we had a finance committee member. Uh, again, there was debate and obviously uh, different opinions as to um, the extent of the project, whether or not it should include or even be talked about a uh, concession stand uh, in the discussions. But I think that's up to the Athletic Facilities Committee to make a determination as to whether or not they're going to try to you know, get options or prices on everything. But there, there was agreement that um, that needs to be done in a, a workmanlike manner yeah. and, and move ahead with uh, a plan that uh, and have enough time to put it together and have a reasonable right. package with the right kind of pricing on yeah. it that they, made sense. They also said there's a very strong possibility that there may be a special town meeting mm. before the uh, June town meeting <coughs> for the purposes of dealing with the Berry Center property so that that would be an opportune time for us to probably have this issue uh, on the special town meeting warrant. Was it made known that we did not want option B, which was to tear up the team room? No, I don't think so. I think I we think it, left wasn't. everything kind of on the, you know, on right. the planning table, so to speak. Yeah, I, hopefully uh, the, the feeling of the school committee who is responsible for that building um, were made pretty clear Mm -hmm. uh, back uh, at the October but, town meeting. Yeah. But I still think there are some members of the Board of Selectmen of the Finance mm -hmm. Committee that consider that a real option. And so it should not be we an need, option. We no, need that's the worst well, plan known to mankind, so it shouldn't if, be an, even on the table. If there's a representative from the finance team now a part of the athletic subcommittee, yeah. you know, facility subcommittee, one would think that you know, their views and their thoughts would be represented at the meetings, right? I think they would be representative of the finance committee in general, and I right. think that they're, and again, I, hopefully everyone's gonna keep an open mind so that we can have some discussions and talk about the different options and what makes sense, um, you know. And again, I think we all agree it doesn't make any sense at all to be going into the existing building and using that building, so. We also talked about the school project, the punch list, the recommissioning of the boilers, and we also talked about the additional costs that the uh, school school department has absorbed in maintaining and taking care of uh, this uh, complex, including but not limited to the utilities, including the electric bill, which is you know been significant, uh, maintaining the uh, wastewater treatment plant, uh, maintaining the HVAC system, and things like that. So okay. we do, we did talk to them; they they listened, and I think that should be part of an, an emphasis in our uh, budget proposal when we make it as to what these additional costs are. And how much we've had to absorb. It will be, yep. Um, beyond that, I would leave it up to John. And I was just, if I could add, just there was a little bit of a discussion. I gave an update on the little school roof right. project, and um, that's a project that has come in under budget um, to the tune of approximately one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I asked if we could keep that money, and they said, <laughs> <laughs> "Unfortunately, they, that's not allowed by the rules." Well. Wow. But I think that was pretty much. I think that sounds that, right. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. And actually, we, that meeting got changed to the 16th. It to December change. 16th. It was, yeah, it's Friday. It's uh, Friday, correct? The 16th. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the uh, next item here is the athletic facilities committee is not met recently, but uh, do you have any further updates, uh, status, or leave it to Mr. Webster. We have a meeting on the 29th at 6.15. Yeah. That's our next meeting. All right. So it's n nothing new until then. Nope. Other than it looks really good. <laughs> did you see it was cut the other day? Yeah. They cut yeah, the whole it looked thing. nice. Yeah. Oh, good. It did. Would you say 6.15? What? 6.15? Yeah. yeah. That just got scheduled uh, over the weekend. Uh, let's see. So the subcommittee schedule uh, upcoming meetings, um, athletic subcommittee on the 29th at 1230, SSBC meeting on the 29th at 530 uh, in the distance learning lab, 
finance planning team uh, on December 16th at 8.15 a.m. in the superintendent's office. Correct. And the NORCAM board of directors on December 15th at 7 p.m. in the NORCAM office. I have not been attending those NORCAM meetings for a while now. Um, I'm not sure how you want to resolve that. I, I could probably start again. I can't go to the December 15th meeting, but um, I was staying away for a while, um, unless somebody else wants to do it. You're going to add that to your New Year's resolutions? Um, I could go back. I mean, nobody else. If you, this might make you feel a little bit better, but less guilty yeah. about not going to those meetings. Um, I went to about five or six months. You ago. did. You did. You did. We, we. I will tell you, Patrick Daly and I continue to meet in conversation with. Um, I'm going to call them engineers, but whether, whether they're AV, but we have had very recent communication with some uh, pricing. And this follows my, I think, my last update on this portion of the project where we were trying to tie the gymnasium to the video production studio. And we've actually gotten some data back on the equipment that's needed, some pricing and such. So we're, I don't want you to think that's fallen completely off the radar, but it is. I don't know whether companies are busy or not, but we did have some very recent communication with um, a firm that had been recommended to us from uh, Rob Carboni at NORCAM, and the gentleman came out, um, was very, very agreeable to what we were looking to try to price, and, and um, I expect that we, you know, might have something to talk a little bit more substantively about very soon. So it's, it's, still, it's still in the works. You have an administrative report? Yeah, I have nothing to to, to share with you tonight. Right. No yeah. correspondence? No. Um, mm. The uh, future business, uh, December 12th, uh, 6.30 here for regular meeting. This, uh, January 9th, 2017, at 6.30, regular meeting here. And January 23rd at 6.30, regular meeting at the Bachelor School for a presentation in the Bachelor School cafeteria. And that's all we have tonight is uh, we have a motion for adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Made and seconded. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.